Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the channel. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the Mathematical Methods Paper 1 Tech Free um, exam today. This is for the QCAA syllabus. Um, as I said, this is pretty much text free, and this is the follow up pretty much to the test we did before, where it was Paper 1, it was the multiple choice. This is the short response now, pretty much, okay? Um, so, pretty much here, I don't know how it's marked. Um, I think it's here, so section 1, this is what we did in the last video. Um, 10 multiple choice and here section 2 10 short response questions each all added together gives 45 marks Okay, you're given 90 minutes for this one five minutes perusal and there's no calculators or anything involved Okay, um, but let's get straight into it pretty much um, So you will be using pretty much the form issue given if you do sit this test here um, So you fill out your school name your Louis books use etc. Um, but let's get straight into the content. Okay right, So that's where you put your multiple choice um, and then straight here, so question 11, so taking part from the previous question, um, finished at the first 10. Determine the derivative with respect to x of the following function. So here we get two of these guys here. Now when I'm looking at this guy here, straight away I'm thinking chain, okay? Because it is a function inside another function. So your inside function is that, and your outside function is the cubic there. Um, that's terrible highlighting. So here, straight away, with chain rule, you want to differentiate the inside function. So we go dy dx. The derivative of that function, the Euler will stay the same. The 1 will disappear. So it'll be e to the x times by the derivative of the outside function. So here, bring the power down the front. So 3, leave what's on the inside. So e to the x plus 1 to the power of 2. Okay. And here, I would just simplify it and just write 3 e to the x, e to the x plus 1 all squared and that's about it really and that will give you your two marks you might get a mark for putting chain rule or something but here this should be your two marks here okay there's not much other working you can show um, this guy here is the same one now you can do this one in two parts you can do quotient personally I'm gonna do product rule so I can rewrite this function and move that up there so I can go sine x multiplied by x to the negative 2 because of that exponent I can move it up there but switch the sign of the exponent so here with product rule, it is a function times another function. So differentiate this guy, leave that guy, then plus leave that guy, and then differentiate that. So dy dx will differentiate the first function. So that will turn to cos x. That will remain the same, so times by x to the negative 2. Plus leave the sine function, so sine x. And then times that by the derivative of this. So this will be negative 2 x to the negative 3. Now notice here, given simplest form, so here we can't leave them as negative exponents, so we'll have to write them as positive, so dy dx will be cos x divided by x squared, plus the negative 2 can stay up here, so negative 2 sine x on x to the 3. And you could probably leave it like that, I would probably write product rule, but you can do this in multiple ways, you can do product rule or you can do chain rule. Either one, it will be fine, okay? Um, if you have any questions about these first two here, leave something in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it, okay? Right, let's take a look at this guy. So, question 12, solve for x in the following. So, we've got given two log questions here. So, what I can do here straight away is I want to write this in exponential form because at the moment, I can't break the log outside, uh, sorry, I can't break x outside the log. So, here I can go, all right, log 2, 5x plus 7 equals 5. This can be rewritten as 2 to the power of 5 equals 5x plus 7, okay? Now here, if you don't know what this is, you have to work out ideas that you already do know. So for example, 2 to the power of 2 is 4. So that means 2 to the power of 4 would be 16. So here, 2 to the power of 5, would that be doubled? So that'd be 32. So remember, you got to use little tricks because this is a non-calc test. So that'd be 32. And that's 5x plus 7. Then you're going to move the 7 across, so 32 minus 7 is going to be 25, so 5x is equal to 25, and of course you can divide by 5, or you can just clearly see that x would be equal to 5, because 25 divided by 5 is 5, so x would then be equal to 5, and that would be your two marks there pretty much, okay? Um, probably look at the marking guide as well, but there's not real other working you can do with that one there, okay? Alright, this one here. So first of all, we want to try and simplify this side, before we're starting to solve for x. Now notice here, these terms here are pretty similar, but they're not exactly the same. Now when we're adding two logs with the same base, you multiply the inside. So you can write this side here as log base 10 of x plus 3 times by x minus 3. Okay, And this would be equal to pretty much this side here, log 10, 
9x minus 29. Now here you can see this is a difference of squares, okay? So I, if I were to expand this, I could write this as x squared minus 9, okay? So if you were to multiply that, you can clearly see that this stuff here would simplify to that stuff there, okay? Now, when you've got it written like this, a lot of students will try and move things across. But here's the trick you can do, okay? If you're logging something completely on one side and you're logging something completely on the other side, that means whatever's in this bracket here must be equal to this bracket here because there are no external other terms. So we can really get rid of the operator operating on both of them. Now, it's not dividing by log, we're just delogging it, okay? So here we have x squared minus 9 equals 9x minus 29, okay? Then we can start to solve this and this will be a quadratic. So move the 9x across, so it's x squared subtract 9x, and then we'll add 29, so it'll be uh, positive 29 minus 9 equals 0. So we'll have x squared minus 9x plus 20 equals 0. Now here we have a quadratic expression, so just think, all right, what two numbers times to give this guy, but add to give negative 9. So straight away I can think of 4 and 5, but they'll both have to be negative, because a negative times a negative will be a positive. So negative 4 times negative 5 will be positive 20, and negative 4 plus negative 5 will be negative 9, okay? So we can write this as x minus 4 times by x minus 5. And since this is equal to 0, that means the opposite signs of these will be equal. So we'll have x minus 4 equals 0, or x minus 5 equals 0, therefore x equals 4, or x equals 5. Now don't do what I just did, I wrote outside the box, but I can do it here because I control the video and I don't care. So these will be both of the answers here, okay? Um, but that's an easy way how to do this question here. A lot of people would complicate and move that guy across, but you can just get rid of the log after pretty much this step here because you've got no other terms pretty much, okay? If you have any questions about the log ones here, leave um, a question below and timestamp it where you don't understand it, but otherwise we'll on to the next one. All right, so question 13, consider the functions f of x equals x squared and g of x equals 4x. So um, A, so you can see this is a two mark question, so in total it's five marks. Determine the x coordinates of the points of intersection of the graphs of the two functions. Okay, so determine the x coordinates of the point of intersection. We wanna know when does this function equal this function here. So straight away we just go, all right, f of x equals g of x. So we have x squared is equal to 4x, okay? Now here you can divide by x just to get x equals 4. But we're also um, missing out on x equals 0. Because here if I chucked in x equals 4, that would work. But so would x equals 0. So these would be the two um, x-intercepts. But the way we can work out the x equals 0 is if you wanted to, is you could think, all right, You've got, so if we move that across, we'd have x squared minus 4x equals 0. So you get x and x minus 4 equals 0. And that would give you x equals 0 and then x minus 4 equals 0. Okay. So if you miss the x equals 0, that will be quite substantial because the next question will probably need that. Okay. All right. Now we can clearly see here, there's a parabola and a linear line. So they're not going to be too bad. The drawing would be something like this. Um, and it would look like that. So obviously we can see an enclosed area, okay? So use the results from question 13a to calculate the area enclosed by the graph. So here, we can pretty much draw it like this. So a straight line like this, and the parabola will be like this. And this will be at 4, and this will be at 0. So that's the area enclosed, okay? Now how I know the drawing is going to look like this is because this will have a steeper gradient. This will eventually overtake it, but it won't overtake it until it actually crosses that point there, okay? Um, so at the moment in that first little region there, that one is steeper, but as soon as it goes past four, then that one's steeper. So here, your top function in this region here would be 4x, and then this one here would be y equals x squared, okay? So here, if I want to work at this area, it will be the integral from 0 to 4 of my top function, so 4x, subtract my bottom function, okay? And that will be the enclosed area, okay? So if you remember back from that idea, if you have like, let's say f of x, and you have g of x, and you want that area there, and let's say that's a, and that's b, that area would be a to b, f of x, subtract g of x, okay? Um, and that'll be about it for that one, okay? 
So, let's get rid of that. Oh, I probably should rub that out because I'll need the room. This integral is quite easy, but setting it up is actually quite tricky relatively, okay? So here, this is going to strap be a power rule. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power. So here, we'd have 4x squared divided by 2 minus x cubed over 3. And you've got the bounds 0 and 4, okay? No c is needed because we've got bounds. Plug in the 4 straight away. So 4 times 4 squared over 2 minus 4 cubed over 3. So here, that's 16. And then you times that by 4. So 16 times by 4, that would be 32 plus uh, 32. So that would be, what, 64? So you have 64 on 2 minus, and then you have 4 times 4 times 4. So that would be, what, the same thing? So 4 times 4 times, oh, not quite. Oh, yeah, it would. It would also be 64 on 3. So here we want to combine them to make sure they have common denominators. So here times the top and bottom. Um, by their respective numbers. How did I do it earlier? I did it a li little bit better. Oh, uh, yep, yep, yep. Mm, what did I do? Did I forget something? 2x. Oh, okay. Oh, I simplified that. So I'm just looking at my previous work and there is an easier way to do it. So I'll put the easier method on the video rather than the complicated one. Um, so here, what you can do to work this out quicker, we'll go, all right, four, 2 divided by 4, that's just 2x squared minus x cubed on 3. Now that actually is going to be a lot easier because that will be 2 times by 4 squared. So um, that will be, what's it called, 32 minus um, 64 on 3. Then you can just times this guy by 3. So 32 times by 3, divide by 3, minus 64 on 3. Now 32 times by 3, um, that'll be just this thing added together. So that'll be 6, and that'll be 9. So 96 over 3, minus 64 on 3. So here, um, go 96 minus 64, and I think that gives you 32. So the answer would be 32 on 3. So that is a quick way to do it. The other way would have worked, but this one's actually a lot quicker now that I think about it and look at my working again. I don't do these videos raw because that would take way too long. If I made a mistake, I'd have to cut it. Um, but hopefully you understand this question here. Um, if you don't, leave a timestamp and I'll try my best to answer it. Okay. So question 14. Consider the function f of x equals natural log of 3x plus 4. Okay. Determine the first derivative. Okay, so straight away when we're differentiating this function here, it is another chain rule. So this is your inside function, that's your outside function. Now if you differentiate natural log of x, that will be 1 over x, okay? So here this will be the same thing, but you've got to times it by the derivative of that. So the derivative of that would be 3, and that would be it. So f dash would be 3 times by 1 over whatever's in here. So 3x plus 4. So your derivative is 3, 3x plus 4, and that's it. Determine the x-intercept of f of x. So x-intercept, that's when y is equal to 0. So set f of x equal to 0, because that's your y in this case here. So f of x equals 0. So 0 equals ln 3x plus 4. And then we can solve for that. Now ln means log base e. So here, when we're rearranging this, it will be e to the power of 0 equals 3x plus 4. But it doesn't really matter because something to the power of 0 will be 1. So we have 1 equals 3x plus 4. Move the 4 across, so negative 3 equals 3x. Therefore, x must be negative 1 if you divide by uh, 3. Righto, C, determine the gradient of the tangent to the... So, sorry, determine the gradient of the tangent to the graph f of x at the x-intercept. So here, we're just substituting this x value into this guy up here because we already know what our derivative is and the, the gradient at that point will be pretty much be x value into f dash of x, okay? So here, all they're after is f dash of negative 1, which would be 3 over 3 times by negative 1 plus 4, okay? Um, this can be simplified, so 3, 3 minus 4 equals 1, so 1 on 3, so 3 is the correct answer. That is the gradient at the x-intercept.
Okay, and that's about it for question 14. Um, again, not too bad, not too bad, not too bad. All right, question 15. So, in the isosceles triangle A, B, C, um, C angle is 120 degrees and the side A is 4 centimeters. So straight away, just draw yourself a triangle. Now, isosceles means two of the sides are the same. Now, here I'm going to label as A, B, C. And they've said C is 120 degrees. So let's say that's 120 degrees. And they said it's isosceles triangle. Now, if that's 120 degrees and it's an isosceles triangle, these two sides have to be the same because there's no other angle there that could be 120 degrees. So that has to be 30. And that also has to be 30 because remember, all the angles have to add up 280. Now, that is little a, which is 4. Now, because it's isosceles, so would that also be 4? And that would be it, okay? Um, and I think that's all it is. Draw the triangle with the given indicated information. Um, and that's about it there. Um, calculate the area of this triangle. Alrighty, so we can use pretty much a formula in our sheet. So we get given this formula here. So area equals a half B C sine A. So what that means is if you have a triangle like this and you have B and C and the angle A, you can work out that area there. We have a very similar setup, except we have C and we still have those two side lengths. So our area will be a half times by the two side lengths, so four times four, and then sine of that angle, which is 120, okay? Now, sine of 120 is actually 60 degrees, okay? So here, sine of 120 is the same as sine of 60 degrees, okay? Because if we use cast, the sine function when it's in quadrant 2 is exactly the same. Um, sorry, the sine is positive just like it is in quadrant 2. Now, 120 minus 90. Oh, actually, that's... um. Sorry, it's not 120. It'd be um, 60. Because um, 120 minus 90 is 30 degrees. My apologies. So it's um, not going to be 60. It'd be 30. So 30. That means my workings here is incorrect or slightly off. So, sine of 120 would be sine of 30. Now, I actually just want to double check that before I go ahead. Not meant to use a calculator, but I don't care. That, and then... Well, no, it should be... should be 60. should be 60. Where do we get this from? Oh, it's that angle there. Sorry, it's not 30 degrees. It's going to be this angle here. That's going to be a 60 degrees. So, that's our complementary angle. So sine of 120 is sine of 60 degrees. I was correct there. Um, I just did the wrong angle. Now, because that's still positive because it's in quadrant 2, we can pretty much work out using this triangle here that should be learnt in the syllabus, and it actually should be on your formula sheet um, in the future, but we can actually work out the sine of 60 using this triangle because it's opposite on hypotenuse, okay? So here we have 16 divided by 2, so area equals 8 times by root 3 on 2. So the area would be 4 root 3. And that's about it, okay? Um, but that's all I'm going to do for this video here. So this is part 1 of this paper here. Um, part 2 will be going up shortly, but if you have any questions from part 1 here, leave something in the comments and I'll try my best to answer it. But I'll see you in the next video.